Okay, don't get overwhelmed by all of this. Let me just read this problem to you. This is very similar to what you guys are gonna be seeing in, in the calorimetry lab. But let me just read it through and then show you step-by-step step what we need to do, okay? So it says here, when 25 mils of a 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide solution at 23 degrees Celsius is added to 25 mils of a 0 0.600 molar acetic acid solution in the calorimeter, we're going to assume that they're both at the same temperature. So the acetic acid and the calorimeter, and, which is the coffee cup, and the sodium hydroxide, they're all at 23 degrees, okay? And then you mix them together, and then what's going to happen? The temperature is going to go up because this is an exothermic acid-base neutralization, and the observed temperature ends up being 25.947, okay? In another experiment, we figured out the heat capacity of that coffee cup calorimeter to be 27.8 joules per degree Celsius. Remember how I told you in the previous video how you can figure that out with hot water and cold water and salt for C. Okay, so we already did that. That's given to us. Uh, they're telling us to assume that the specific heat of the solution is exactly the same as water, same as water. And they're giving us the density of the solution as 1.02 grams per mil. If they don't give you the density of the solution, you just assume that the solution is just like water. So for you, those of you who are going to be doing the, the pre-lab questions um, and they don't give you the density of the solution, just assume it's one gram per mil, just like water is. Okay? What do they want you to do? They want you to write the thermochemical equation with the molar heat of neutralization. What does that mean? It means that you need to first figure out how much heat is evolved using this. And then once you figure that out, you are going to figure out per mole how much heat is being produced. Well, you, this is also a limiting reactant problem. So it's several steps that are involved. Let's just go step by step and get through this together, okay? So first things first, Q is equal to M S delta T plus C delta T. Remember what I told you guys from the previous video, okay? What is the mass of the solution? Well, I know that I've got 25 mils and 25 mils. So you add them together, that's 50 mils. Now, the density is 1.02. So 50 mils, I'm going to be 50 mils, 50.00 mils, and then use the density as a conversion factor, 1.02 grams per mil, right? 50 times 1.02. I know what it is, but I'm just double checking. Okay, 51. Good. So we have 51 grams. Cancel out it. So our mass is 51. The specific heat, they told us to use the specific heat of water, which is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. What would the delta T be? All right, we have initial temperature was 23. Final temperature was 25.947. So delta T is 25.947 minus 23, which is 2.947. That's your delta T. And it's the same delta T for the calorimeter also. So we're, then we're going to go plus, what's the um, uh, C value is right over here. 27.8 is the heat capacity of the calorimeter. So we're going to do 27.8 joules per degree Celsius times 2.947 degrees. Okay? Everything cancels except for the joules. So pick up your calculator. 51 times 4.184 times 2.947. Press equals, get a number, and then... 27.8 times 2.947, press equals, get a number, and then add these two together, okay? Uh, you do that, I will do it also, and hopefully we all get the same answer. 
Is that one? Okay, so I've got for this six two eight point eight. Okay, and then for this one I have two seven point eight times. Oh God, I just pressed my subtract. Twenty seven point eight times two point nine four seven, and I have eighty one point nine. All right, so I'm going to add this to the 628.8, and I get 710.7. I don't know how many uh, sig figs have I, if I've just been, eh, yeah, that's fine. I'll go 711, 711 joules. Okay, we're not done. We're just done with this part. Okay, so now we know that this reaction with this amount of acid and this amount of base is going to produce 711 joules. Great. But they want the thermochemical equation. They want per mole. So when we write a thermochemical equation, we're going to have to know how much do we actually have here. So we've got 25 mils of a 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. Let me erase all of this. You keep, keep this number. We're going to be using it a little later on. I have this whole problem in my notes, so you do too, so I can erase it. When we write, remember when we write a thermochemical equation? We write, so we're going to have sodium hydroxide. Uh, this is an aqueous solution, AQ. Remember, we have to always write down the phases. Plus acetic acid, CH3COOH. AQ will give you sodium acetate, NaCH3COO, AQ, plus water. Delta H equals, this is what will make it a thermochemical equation, or Q is equal to. Now we need to know what to put here, all right? Um, and we can't put the 711, because the 711 wasn't, for one mole of this reacting with one mole of this. The 711 was for 25 milliliters of a whatever that molarity was, okay? So we need to find out which ones are limiting reactants so that we know how many moles are actually reacting here. So we've got 25 mils, so 0 0.025 liters of a 0 0.500, 0 0.500 moles per liter. This is our sodium hydroxide. And then we've got for the acetic acid, for the acetic acid, how much are we using? Also 25 mils, uh, but this is 0.6 mol molar. So 0 0.025 liters times 0.600 moles per liter. All right, so do the math. 0 0.025 times 0 0.5, and you've got 0 0.0125 moles of sodium hydroxide. And for the acetic acid, 0 0.025 times 0 0.6, and you've got 0 0.0 one five zero moles. Okay, so they're supposed to react in a one to one ratio. One mole of this will react with one because this is a balanced equation. So obviously this is limiting. So what this is telling us is that 0 0.0125 moles of sodium hydroxide will react with 0 0.0125 moles of acetic acid, and you're just going to have some acetic acid left over. All right, so in order to figure out this value, you take your 711 and divide it by the least number of moles. That's the step so that you can get this value. That's your molar heat of neutralization. So I'm going to take that 711, divide it by the limiting moles, 0 0.0125. Okay, let's see what we get. 711 divided by 
0 0.0125, and you're going to get a big number. So it's going to be 56,880 joules. Okay, good. Normally, in thermochemical equations, the delta H is in kilojoules. So we're going to switch this to kilojoules. So it's going to be 50, uh, let's move the decimal three places, 56.80. How many sig figs do I want? I'm probably stuck with three sig figs here. Yeah, let's just round it to three sig figs. So because the molarity that I gave you was three sig figs. So it's going to be 56.9 kilojoules. Okay. 56.9 kilojoules. Now I need to put it over here. Remember, delta H or Q, you have to put the proper sign. Was this an exothermic reaction or an endothermic? Obviously it was exothermic. How did you know that? Because the temperature went up. Okay. Anytime the temperature goes up, it's an exothermic reaction. So what do we do? We have to put a negative. So we're going to write negative 56.9 kilojoules. Okay, there's your thermochemical equation. There's your molar heat of neutralization. Okay, so that is a typical coffee cup calorimetry problem. If you paid attention to every detail of the end of last video and all of this video, you should be able to do your um, calorimetry lab with no difficulty whatsoever. And you should be able to answer any calorimetry problem I give you on a test and all of the homework problems too. Um, the next video, I might do one more calorimetry and then I will be getting into, if I'm not mistaken, Hess's Law. I think that's the next thing.